Is this thing on? Okay. It's good to be back. The Coffee and Carving Show. Episode, episode number 40 40 man 40 four uh, zero. i did miss this i don't know about you but well you'll miss it again but anyway <laughs> how are you doing pretty good man i'm a little uh road worn but i feel uh i feel so good to be back home to be uh back in the shop back back to it yeah yeah well again big apologies for uh last week you know it's it's inevitable but uh we don't know how to uh to tell you because nobody checks the uh the youtube feed right for the community post but uh, yeah again last week alec was off teaching and we just could not make it work again so but that's the way she rolls yeah yeah it seems to be that a lot of these at least the last two wood carving events i've uh, taught at the uh, the individuals that host these events they tend to put them in places where there isn't internet access. So places that you can actually learn something and not live on your phone all day. Well, that's it's true. a good idea. It's a good idea. Maybe maybe that is part. I mean, that could be part of it. Truly could. Um, well, I think my secret opinion is that wood carving starts where people live in the country because they're there's nothing better to do. Can't be distracted. By yeah. TikTok. Got, yeah. Yeah. Correct. And you just have endless hours. That's how it started for me growing up in the yeah. country. So, and that's not always the case, I guess. There's a lot of city folk carvers. I'm sure I'd love to hear from you. City folk carvers <laughs> <laughs> message, message us and let us know if you are an urban carver, urban carver. It's a, uh, you know what? I was thinking the other day, well, I'll, I'll tell you more about it later, but if you are an apartment dweller, yeah, what a great hobby! Come on, you're right. It's a fantastic hobby. Yep, especially on the on the smaller scale. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's transferable anywhere. Mm-hmm. But before we get too far, I want to thank our coffee heroes for the last week: uh, Roger Ivester, Justin R, and Mark Goodman. Thanks for uh, buying us a coffee. Uh, always appreciated, never expected, but uh, we really do appreciate it. Indeed. Uh, and I have something special to show. Let's see it. Are you ready? What? Oh my goodness! He's found the golden chalice. I have. I'm drinking a the delicious golden coffee. <laughs> that mug wins. Out out of my 1970s family uh, uh, coffee mug tree. It's the but- Holy Grail. So I'll tell them more about, about it later, but uh, for those for those watching or listening, rather, it's a it's it's a it's, probably some version of a replica of the Holy Grail. How would you describe this? No, it's but it's got the seventies oranges, yeah, and uh, it's mm-hmm. on a little base. It's right. fantastic. So we're going through my parents' house and going through all the, the old stuff, and I have a distinct memory as a child with six of these cups on this little wire wrought iron little uh, little coffee uh, mug tree. Mm-hmm. Can you picture it? Like six of these cups. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. just hung them back. Yep. And I still, I haven't seen that thing for 40 years at least. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. But. Yeah. I uh, never had anything like that. We didn't have... Uh, my mom and dad came into mug collecting later in life. They started that when I started doing art shows. Because uh, really, what are you going to do at an art show? You've got two options, right? Really. You've got overly priced paintings, wood carvings, etc., which I'm starting to fall in that category. Or you have mugs and bowls and plates, and some of those can get really expensive too. But most of them, you can just pick up a cup or a plate, and you get someone's handiwork, and that's pretty awesome. So, do you know what I've said probably a dozen times in the last few months is yeah. if I were to start collecting anything, and now I, people hear me when I say mm-hmm. I do not want to start collecting these, but <laughs> if I was to collect anything. I have seen the coolest salt and pepper shakers. Oh yeah, everywhere. Yeah, that would be the most, the ultimate mm-hmm. thing to collect. There is so many varieties of salt and pepper shakers, but 
I do not want to because that I, will interfere. I with would my, never. I would make fun of you for the rest of your life. If you start imagine. Collecting. If, I live. I live my dream life. I get my bush. I build my little cabin, and I have a whole wall of salt. And Hi, I'm shakers. Doug. Come to my house and see my salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll have nine kitty cats, and uh, yeah. you need them. You need the cats to really build. You wouldn't seem quite. See, you you have two. You're too normal now. But if you had the cats, that would put you over the edge. Because then, because the moment you say that you collect salt and pepper shakers, people yeah. are thinking, oh, um, that, that's probably that's weird, but it's probably cool. Yeah. Then they see your cats, and then they go, oh, yeah. I don't know about this guy. And then they see the bird nest in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's say, old okay. Doug, though. That's the yeah, long haired Doug. That's right. Yeah. I kind of every once in a while, I kind of miss it. You know, I, I see you and your nicely shaped head, and I think, you know what? Put that long hair back on there and that beard just grow. Yeah. But it's growing back in spades, man. You have the I, ability to grow a beard. I wish I could do a, a quick quick change. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah. Back turn, and forth. Turn, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Beard, no beard. Beard, yeah. no beard. It would be a fun accessory. Mm-hmm. Not to, uh, but anyway, I'll let, you can't. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you can't. You just can't. So It's true. You can't. No sense talking about it. Like you live in your dreams. Like. When I was growing up, my parents would tell me the sky is the limit, but uh, they weren't very supportive because they didn't they didn't uh, encourage my dream of uh, being an astronaut. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That's my favorite okay. one in months. That's a, that's a great really? joke. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, I'm glad you say that because uh, I wasn't sure about that one. But uh, you know, when one door closes, another opens. Is what my father used to say. But he wasn't a very good cabinet maker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two for two. Alec actually laughed and didn't have to think about it. Yeah, that that was good too. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, See, I'm back yeah. at it. I'm not all worn out and <laughs> not all worn out. Yeah. Well, what did what did one blade of grass say to the other blade of grass after there was no rain for a couple weeks? Mm. I guess we'll have to make do. Oh my gosh! I hit zero out of zero stars. All right, I I'm hate that joke with a passion. I have so strong wait, wait. hatred for what that are you joke. Drinking? Oh, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't okay. I'm in kind of. You're chewing. Ice. Oh, there's ice. Yeah, I made iced coffee. I'm sure this is not a great audio thing, but I'm chewing on the ice. I have a habit. If anyone has any tips on how to break that habit, but it's um, I got. Yeah, I'm new to the ice game coffee or ice coffee game, but uh, I love it now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was very late to the party. I never had iced coffee till a couple of years ago. No, no, it's it's good. So the difference is between my normal coffees and this coffee is this time we got well we had a wedding shower number one, mm. and so part of the wedding shower, Annalise jokes and says the only reason we're having a wedding is because I wanted a coffee maker, mm. and because otherwise we would have eloped, right? Is the joke. Um, which there might be some truth to it. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So we, I got this espresso machine that I wanted, and oh, it's you not not Annalise, an actual coffee maker. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that will burn. She's gonna hear that. She's not yeah. gonna like that. Yeah, she won't like that. Mm-mm, no, she doesn't even. No, no, no. Perfect. Um. <laughs> But that being said, uh, it's in. It's in. I, I fired it up yesterday for the first time, or maybe it was the day before. And yeah, it makes good coffee. And so this is espresso with a little milk and ice. So trying to hold in the joke about have, getting the dishwasher thrown in for free, but I wish. Um, she can't wash dishes. Well, she can, but I don't. I don't. Uh... <laughs> oh, this is bad. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way. My uh my dishwasher is broken. So I think I will be the dishwasher for a little while until it gets fixed. Hopefully before our marriage starts because I can't imagine that going over well. Although the Garcias, they don't really use um dishwashers. They have dishwa they have a dishwasher, but they don't really use it very often, so no. My parents have never had a dishwasher. Really? Yep. Yep. No, but in in all honesty, Annalise is she's definitely cleaner than me. So I'm uh, I was taking my uh, future brother-in-law through my house today, and I told him that uh, 
this house does need a woman in it. It needs the, the touch of a woman for sure because it's a little spidery and a little a little bit like <laughs> poorly decorated from me. It's already gotten better though since she's been working in there. So Well, that being said, well, that being said, you, what, what have you been up to? What do you up to? What have you been up to? What would it, tell uh, me everything. Uh, I'll tell you everything. Well, not much really. Oh, except whoa. For, except for a lot. Wait. Look at that carving behind you. You painted it. You didn't see that? Holy smokes. Well, I can, I can, I can grab it. Here's a sec. So out of the corner of my eye, right as Doug started talking, my ADHD kicked in and saw this really nice carving that he did. And so, I saw it before it was painted. But yeah, let's see it now. I, uh, I learned wow. some things. That's awesome. It's kind of fun, eh? That is so cool. Holy moly. I, I learned some lessons that, well, my microphone's over here. Uh, I, I still like That's it really unpainted, cool. but I like it painted too. I, I felt that I had to paint this. Now, let me tell you why, because it's very subtle and you can't see it. Mm -hmm. But for those watching, sorry about the audio, but uh, the bottom of the beard is, is blue, like water. And it's wow. hard to see. It's very yeah, gray on top. A little bit of it. There's, there's blue in the bottom. If you see it in person can see it but uh i don't know what it means but it was a fun carve but i liked it unpainted too so that's why i was debating it to paint or not but i had to paint it i just wow. felt i had to but well it so worked out it, that one really took to the paint well like in yeah. other words you did a nice job painting that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was just yeah. gonna paint the lighthouse part of it but uh i don't even know what it's supposed to be but it's yeah. just something different that uh, i had in my brain but that aside, I did make a little tutorial of these little tiny, tiny. Uh, or did I did I show this last time? I oh know. yeah, or I had the full. These size are the birds. bigger ones. These are yeah, cute. Yeah, so I, I made tiny little flat plane uh, comfort birds and made a little uh, a video on a tutorial on that. Oh, over on on the YouTube's. Oh, very cute. But, uh, otherwise, in your absence, uh, oh, I know. I well, I moved. My my father, as many of you know, my mother passed away two weeks ago mm -hmm. now. But uh, we've moved my father into a uh, retirement home, which is fantastic. What a great place. I actually asked the lady on the way out of the desk, I said, how old do I have to be to move in here? <laughs> it's fantastic. It's just, a, yeah. it feels like a cruise ship. Yeah. The games all day long and mm -hmm. movies and little services and events happening and three mm -hmm. meals in the dining hall that are, the chef made. Wow. It's fantastic. I love it. But That's I got him neat. moved. But so then we just started going through the house and the shop and stuff. And it's all up to us to, uh, you know, he took what he wanted and could care less about anything else. Right. And uh, so we're going through the, hence the mug. I told my wife, I said, I don't want that mug. I just, it's just like a time capsule though. Like every, every, like mother was a pack rat. And so everything from, I'll probably end up finding my baby tea somewhere, honestly. Like, <laughs> like, like anybody who lived in the depression time or whatever, like every, every milk bag was saved and bread. Like, it's just, it's just amazing. The things that are just every nook and cranny. Did you just, say milk bag? Oh, you American. Yes. Yo. Milk comes in bags in Canada. What? And they, they double as great freezer bags when the milk is out. What? So you take your little zip it tool. I'm, I'm talking straight to Canadians now. They used to have a little zip it tool that you, you hook on the uh, milk bag holder. And it would just be a little razor blade thing. You slice the tip off the corner and you pour your milk. But then you take the zip tool and you cut the top off, rinse it out. And they're a super strong freezer bag, if you don't know. <laughs> what you put milk in are you trying to emulate the udder when you're doing that is that what it is no nope. i don't know what it is do you put teats either. on the bag what is going on <laughs> nope but no that'd be weird you could yes. you were gonna say you could but people did but they, you did yeah. yeah no i didn't you didn't no but the uh anyway like i was saying so everywhere we look it's like a little time capsule and we're just having a hoot finding all this stuff from our i've got i've got to find i'm still stuck on the bag but I'm three liters in a bag. You buy three, three, three bags in a in a bag. So a bag consists of what? Three, one liter bags. Oh no, this is a nut milk bag. What the heck? Yeah. What? 
This is war. This is Canada. Look, Americans. Yep. So we're, we're missing out. Ba- They've been bag, holding back from us. In that bag is three separate one-liter bags of milk. We could have been putting our milk in bags this whole time. Yep. yep. We don't need. We don't need no curtains. Yeah. Man, what have we been up to? Look at that. Milk bags, huh? Yep. Wow. Yep. Well, that's pretty nice. And otherwise, where was I? I did a, well, I, you can't really see either. I did a major re, I redid my whole carving room. Mm. It looks really and, nice. I see the, the, you're making me want to turn my lights on back here because it looks so much better and you're back. It looks like I'm in a hospital right now compared to yours. I redid my it's carving beautiful. room and moved things all around. And I also went and I cleaned out my whole workshop. Wow. Took loads of stuff to the dump. It's been fantastic. We need a little warmth over here. It still looks like a oh. hospital. I love the I love the the way you had everything arranged in there. It looks it looks really nice. Yeah, well, I don't know why I did it bef- like didn't do it before, but my paint station Yeah. Now was right here. Mm. Before it was turned the other way. And I was like, well, now I can just go three three different ways again. And I can even carve on the on this in the chair straight behind me. Yep. And if you well could do a backflip, if you could do like a no, I get, yeah. If you could do a backflip, that would end you up in the painting room. Oh boy! And I made another carving station downstairs where I actually carved that last carving because uh, it's cool down there, and uh, it was nice cleanup on the cement floor. It's a sweep, sweep, sweep. Nice. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Well, no, actually, I thought about the backflip theory more, and that actually is, that doesn't make any sense because if you did a backflip, you'd end up uh, where you started. I haven't listened to you anymore. But anyway. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be at this point. I have one more story to tell, and then it's all on you. But uh, Oh, boy. I got out the chainsaw the other day, and I had some branches to trim off. And I don't know. No, you've never been to my house. You, we didn't meet here. But anyway, I have trees galore and i started trimming branches off trees and then i got super carried away once my neighbor came over and told me i could dump all the brush on his property <laughs> instead of taking it away i said okay and i just went crazy so i guess it was a, a week ago saturday so almost a week and a half uh i had six monster heaping trailer loads of brush that i removed and i mean i was climbing trees one-handed chainsaw carving like knocking branches off and hold on a tree like a monkey and mm-hmm. extension ladders. And I just went crazy, got rid of all the, uh, the dead, dead branches and the branches that were in the, touching my house or in the way of cutting the grass. And this went crazy. I have a story and, uh, about w- w- when you're done f- about ladders and my, and, and scary positions in a second. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did all that and injury free all day long. Wow. Came back. That's great. A, right. Well, my wife said she was too scared to look out the window at me because I was such a moron. Oh, around the oh I fully believe it. I fully yep. believe it. Oh, so the, you seem like the type to be up there just like monkeying around yeah. from branch to branch. But then after all that, I did a little bit of carving. and uh, I did probably about midnight. I did a quick little cleanup. Mm-hmm. And I have a dumpster at my other uh, my other work that I'd be at at 6 o'clock in the morning. And so I thought, I'm just going to carry this garbage bag yeah. out and put it in my trailer mm-hmm. for the morning. And it was it was the darkest of nights. It was the <laughs> black. It was super dark. Yeah. And I walked out my laneway, and uh, after that whole day of craziness working, I walked into my recycling bin, <laughs> which is a, a for those who don't know what we have, it's like a bin on wheels. It's about mm-hmm. four feet tall, and okay. somehow I walked straight into it. Didn't even see it. And I caught the handle under my ribs as I fell over it. And I hurt myself more than I've hurt myself in months and months. Wow. My ribs are either they're cracked or they're just so bruised. It's been a week and a half and they hurt. Just That's as not much. good. You They hurt just as much today as they did when I did it. I was sitting in my layway at midnight going, oh! <laughs> you probably crazy. did. You probably did break a rib. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I did or not, but they're super bruised, and uh, apparently they take a long time to heal, and there's nothing you can do for it other than just get through it. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's my whole story of just crazy, crazy working all day, 
and then yeah. hurt myself taking out the trash. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my stories. Uh, well, my How story about the ladder, really quick, before I tell you what I've been up to lately, is uh, my neighbor was trying to do something very much like is in Doug's uh, background there, the uh, string lights in his backyard, and he. Uh, he said, uh, Alec, I need you to hold this ladder for me while I uh, get up here on this tree and fix this light and get it to, to attach. It's not attached right. So I said, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. Where are you going to lean it up against? He said, oh, this branch is coming off of this tree. I'm going to have the ladder leaning up, ag- up against this branch. And the branch was about yay big. So what? Well, probably smaller, maybe like a quarter of an inch thick. And I said, no, not, no. Not, not that branch. And he said, yeah, but you're going to hold it. And so I said, no, 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 no. Do you no. know what a quarter inch is? Uh, a quarter inch? Maybe, maybe it was a half inch. It was, okay. about, it was probably about that much, right? <laughs> okay. It might have been. But, but, but so small that you would laugh. So okay. don't, I'm not even underestimating the size. Okay. It's okay. an incredible, incredibly small mm. amount of branch. And I said, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. No, we're not. And so he's like, well, I'm going to go up either way. So you're going to support it and I'm going to fall bunch of friends are out there this girl a friend of ours runs up and says i'll hold it i'll hold it no one's gonna hold it he's gonna fall he's starting to climb up i'm like no i'm not i'm not gonna be involved this girl is trying to hold this ladder and when i talk about a ladder i mean like this right like a wooden ladder where you're holding it from the bottom not a wooden ladder but an aluminum ladder where it's just a straight thing so so she's holding it down here he's climbing the ladder and she she's the only reason that he's staying up this have you what that seems like that seems like the weird he didn't fall he said he's done it before yep there you go so i have uh, okay since we're talking about ladder stories i'll give you one more quick one when i was 19 i bought a uh, a townhouse yeah and i was going to uh reside the front in the front it was just a, just a simple townhouse there's a i think there's a group of six of them and i was there and it, we had the sidewalk straight out from the front door yeah and i had to do above the front door of the siding and i had the ladder on too much of an angle but i had a little uh a little canopy over the front door so i couldn't get it tighter on the bottom oh. so as you know what would happen with a extreme lean on a on a smooth cement surface on the bottom yeah i got up to the top of it oh it slid out oh. but of course the front door was three steps up so when i came down the ladder hit the top step so my legs went between two rungs and stopped like oh. six inches between my legs to my crotch. Oh, I, I was almost, uh, I wouldn't have been child, childbearing. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. If I, if the steps had been higher, that would have saved money on procedures though. If you're trying there, to stop having kids. There you go. So, okay. Sorry. Oh, no, what no. Been up to? Well, I've been traveling a lot. I've been, so I was gone. I was in Buffalo. Of course, we talked about that, I think. Yeah. And then, and then from there I had some, a little bit of time off, but then I went to, uh, well, I was working, of course. I was making videos for the school with uh, young Samuel. Sam is now my uh, video guy. And so this this young man whose dad owns a recording studio and co-owns a beautiful music venue, right? So he's been uh, he's been learning the ways of, uh, of filming wood carving. He's been pretty familiar with wood carving. Uh, oh, sorry, with filming, though. He's been holding his dad's camera for a while. So it's good to have him helping because he's actually much better at holding the camera than I am while I'm carving. And actually, probably better at holding the camera than I am when I'm only holding a camera. So, he's a talented kid. But so yeah, that's been going really well. He comes over, and I, I make video. I, I make the uh, instructional content, and he edits it. And so he's in Guatemala, if I'm not mistaken, right now. Really? Um, I guess he's doing some sort of uh, missions trip. Uh, that's pretty cool for a 15 year old to go on a missions trip to Guatemala by himself without any yeah, family. Yeah, it is. So, well, now on that note, ask me ask me after you're done talking about my lunch today. But go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I'm guessing it was like a cheeseburger or something, like nachos. Oh no, you keep going. I'll tell you after. <laughs> something Guatemalan. Um, long story short, um, we we were working a bit, and then I ended up going to a class. It's it called International Carb. I think it's called International Carvers Congress, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, International Wood Carving Congress. 
It's a big event. It used to be the biggest, I think. Uh, they used to have wood carving illustrated there. They used to have all the big people there, the big wood carving people, and some smaller wood carving people as well, um, medium sized ones. There's a lot of different types of people out there in Iowa, but um, <laughs> mostly, you know, mid sized ones. And uh, yeah, and big, a lot of bigger ones as well. But it was a fantastic event, man. There were a lot of really nice people there. Uh, you know, the class was, uh, w w the students actually did good. I, I enjoyed it because we had three new students uh, who were young. Th they were under the age of 30. One of them was Sam. Another one was Brian, uh, who we had in the podcast. Brian came out. And then another young guy by the name of John, who found out about the class through uh, the internet. But he found out about me through you because he's a huge uh, you fan. Not you, the nice. TV series, but Doug Linker. Yeah. Nice. He's a big Doug Lincoln fan, and he's such a huge fan of you that he uh, messaged me about the class, and I didn't see his message. But then when we met up in person, he had said that, you know, I messaged you because I found out about you from your podcast from Doug. But Doug is like, you know, somebody that he would talk about, and we were talking about how good you were. And a lot of this stuff, I was trying to constantly change the subject, you know, enough of this Doug thing. And they kept bringing it back around. I would say, well, what about, you know, the weather? The weather's nice out here. And they were like, yeah, but have you seen the way he paints his carvings? They're just so good. So I'm wondering where my cut is for him taking your class. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, that's not going to happen. But there's a, uh, there's a lot of nice people out there who listen to the podcast at this event. And so they came up and they said, hey, we, we support your event. We buy you coffee. And a lot of people, it seemed like most of the people that we run into there uh, that talked to me said, oh, yeah, and tell Doug I said hi. You know, they wouldn't even say I listened to the podcast. They would just say, hey, tell Doug I say hi. And then I would say, oh, yeah, I will. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It made me feel really good at least. I know uh, I'm not used – you're probably used to it, but I'm not used to people – knowing who you are I'm, uh, and kind of knowing that I'm with you. It's kind of new. That I'm no, I will like, say that. It's so strange. It's very yeah. – I'll never get used to it. It's just strange. Yeah. Because yeah. if they really knew me, it's just a quiet, small-town guy. It's yeah. so strange. Yeah. Well, if they really knew you, they'd probably bury themselves in a pit somewhere and just stay under there with some saltine crackers for months. Well, that uh, – <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They uh Doug is one of my good buddies, guys. Some yeah, people think some that. people don't stop, know. St stop I told that. I I talked to Doug on the phone and I told him that he was my buddy and then uh I called him a few days later and I, I cuz I hadn't oh, talked yeah. to him in a while and he's like, "Are is everything okay?" and I was like, "Yeah, I, I I wanted to apologize. Uh I think I got soft on you and I didn't mean you to." Did. It was really strange. I won't, and I won't ever do it again. I won't do it yeah. again. I won't do it yeah. again. I did it no. again, so I apologize again. <laughs> so back to my story. Uh, it went pretty well. There were some problems. I think the event was short-staffed, so there was a lot of uh, problems with that, but they think they're going to fix that next year. So if you had any problems, you took classes there, they're going to fix it next year. So be, keep that in mind. I'm hoping they will. Uh, if you weren't there and you had – if you weren't there – now you know that there was problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, just people were the price, people were having different issues with certain things like but they uh they did the best they could with it and they uh and so I think some of the websites that they they were overwhelmed it's this huge event and there were only like four there were only four people involved in running the event. Mm -hmm. uh, I think four or five. And it used to be like this huge thing where all these people yeah. would So that was really uh that was overall it was a good thing and then uh, i did floyd fest in up north in osceola michigan and that was pretty cool people showed up and i was uh really tired i didn't know i was going to be doing the class because they couldn't they didn't fill my class until the day before so there were five people and then all of a sudden they got 10 people in the class over one night so i assumed i wasn't going because i have a class minimum and uh and then he said well no we got 10 and so I was at my fiance's house. I was uh, at, at her sister-in-law's house celebrating a birthday party on Sunday night. And the next day was the event early in the morning. So I was like, Annalise, I know you drove me here from, from church, but I have you have to drop me off after this stuff is done. And then I'm going to run to Walmart, buy a tent and a cot <laughs> and a bunch of ramen. And then she was like, you're why? And I said, well, I'm going to go to this wood carving thing. And she said... Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. And then so I packed up, and I had just gotten from out of town, so I was home for a day, 
and then I had to leave again for another week. So I went over there, and there were there were nine people. In fact, they they managed to get a lot of people in there at the very last minute. So apparently, woodcarvers are kind of last minute in nature. I don't know, but <laughs> but they did a good job. The students did a great job, actually. A few of them were actually. I need to show off. One of these ladies did. You should show off because I every time that uh, you talk to me or I see your students work and stuff, I'm always like, I can't believe. Some of these guys are first-time carvers too. Yep, and uh, they do amazing work in their class. Yeah, well, like it, I, it's so worthwhile to take a class, and I say that from absolutely no experience. Yeah, Just from well, a lot from. of well, a lot of us take classes from watching people online, like you, right? Like so many people have taken your classes online, and really, that's just watching your YouTube videos because they're so informative, and instead, and that's kind of what we're doing in these classes. I still don't think you can beat in person. Yeah. It, yeah, they're different the pros and cons and, and pointing things out. Yeah. 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 There, there are pros and cons, but really quick, I, I pranked my students. I wanted to show you that. So I talked to this guy I, at the end of all my classes, we do a class review. And so, uh, or like we call it a critique, even though really it's mostly compliments. Uh, but we do have some critique. And, uh, I told, uh, Lenny, one of the guys in my class that he, when he brought his carving up, uh, he, I'm going to throw it on the ground and step on it and say, you call us a carving. And so I gave him a dummy piece of wood, like a blank piece of bark. And uh, so then the critique started, and, and I actually got it on film. So the guy who was holding the camera thought he was just filming the critique. But really, I was I don't really care about filming the critique as much as... Uh... Oh, uh... I got most of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he threw his carving on I the ground. I got him pretty good. Yeah. So if you can't, it's such a small picture, but I threw his carving right on the ground and I f freaked people out. I freaked myself out. I, I was shaking afterwards. I, was, I felt like one of those <laughs> old German wood carving instructors. Because, uh, yeah, I looked on their faces and they were like, you know, they were very concerned. But this is an amazing carving. This is the whole point of me pulling this phone out. Uh, this this is just to zoom up zoom in on the face, but look how good she did on that face. Oh my goodness, it's oh amazing, my, folks. Uh, Story dude. audio, but this is amazing. Yeah, look oh at the my, eyes. Oh my gosh, you want to know how she got said. those eyes? This is what she said. At least she she said that um, she misunderstood a step where I was carving. You know how I carve the pupils out as well as the irises, like the colored part. Sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she carved the the white of the eye out instead. And look at that effect. Oh, okay. That's what I'm doing from now on. At least I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll try it once. Slash, this is my permanent. <laughs> it's so either once. Or... Here's what something I learned on my last carving, too, was that uh, yeah. if you're going to paint them, don't carve anything. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Oh, you tried uh, both? <laughs> I carved this eye and then tried to paint it. Oh. It, does, it didn't work, but mm -hmm. from a distance, it looks good. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Well, it looks fine to me. It looks good to me. But and we had all different types of things. This lady tried to do a version of Jesus, which was pretty cool. Uh, kind of like a more historically accurate, like Jewish Jesus, which is pretty sweet. Um, this guy... I thought he had a cool composition on his piece. He has like, see how it's all broken up? He, like the bottom, he has kind of like the hair separated out and mm. kind of flows around. That's cool. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff in that class. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. Yeah, no, they must good. they must go home awful tickled with themselves. They were really they were really proud of themselves. I think for the most yep, part, it should be. <laughs> I, I hope so. And it was a good atmosphere because I was really tired and didn't know I was going, so I was crabby at the beginning. And uh, I think everybody was, uh, you know, they. I, I I as I got some sleep in that I stayed I stayed in a tent, so I got a little bit of sleep the first night, and I woke up in a better mood. And and uh, I think by then everyone was charged up and ready to 
to carve and so we had a good class but they were staying late you know i would go over there into the building after uh after i'd get bored sitting in my tent or sitting in my car for a few hours after class and i would go back in there and they'd they, a couple people would be in there just furiously like i'm gonna get this thing you, done you camped on the on the ground for the yeah Okay. Yeah, so the way it works, they, they have the event, which is like 8, the, we get there at 8, that it goes from 8.30 to, uh, to to 5, and then they have a uh, uh, break, and then at 7, they open up again, and people can free carve in there, and yeah. Hmm. yeah going someday, hard. someday I want to try something like that. Yeah, yeah, yep, so, anywho, that I did that, and it was, uh, I guess maybe the tent thing, you know, if you're if you're a good sleeper, I'm not a good sleeper. Uh, the tent thing is the way to go because you have the air flowing over your head. You know, you feel everything, the elements, you feel the rain, you feel the wind, you hear everything. You're one with the dogs barking and everything. It's, it's nice if you sleep well, but if you're like me, you too one with everything and you're just kind of like, you feel like the tent flapping around in the wind and you can't fall asleep. So, but Anyway, that being said, I had a terrible time with my tent. I had a horrible time. Um, it was the worst. Tent tenting and carving for me, I can't do. I can, because I can spend three days in a tent and feel sick as long as I'm swimming around and just chatting with my friends. But when you're really trying to be focused and I'm gonna get these guys where they need to be and they're gonna they're gonna kill this class. And I'm gonna yeah, teach it's them all another the stuff it's another element that takes yeah takes away from yeah uh, your task at hand. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be on five hours of sleep no. at that point. So that's my story. That's what I've been up to. Um, for the like most wedding part. shower, you had a wedding shower. Oh, your you're first, right. Is this is your first wedding event? Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's work stuff. But yeah, personal personal life. Uh, I did. Uh, I had a sh- uh, there was a shower, a wedding shower that was held for my fiance and I, whereby. Uh, it's an odd tradition. I was very nervous and I was not excited about the idea of having to open presents in front of people mm-hmm. because, you know, cause a, you really appreciate the presents cause they're too nice, but you kind of feel bad because you're getting all this stuff from people that you haven't seen very much. Maybe you've seen them once or twice in your entire life. And so, yeah, it felt a little weird, you know, like trying to relearn people's names and then they gave you a hundred dollars and you're just like supposed to react in front of everyone, you know? They're like, Okay, uh 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 say Billy gave you this and you're like, Who's Billy? And they're like, It's your second cousin, he's right in front of you. I'm like, Billy, how could I forget? This is amazing. And so you just do that about fifty times and then, then it's over. So it was fun though. You can't have a bad time when people are giving you stuff. So it was awesome. Yeah. So I don't think I've ever been part of a shower. It's it's a newer thing when they have a man and a woman at the shower. I didn't know that until I was in the chair about ready to open presents. Uh, she said, "You no." I think she said it before once, like the morning of. She said, "People don't like guys don't always go to the shower." Yeah, and I, you know, I, after I'd already tried to figure out what I was gonna wear and stuff, and I was like, I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm going, and I told everyone I'm going. So, but it was awesome. No, it was we had cu- we had cookies and cupcakes and stuff and Greek food, which spanikopita, spanikopita is spinach pie. So that's. Have you had spanikopita before? No, I don't like spinach. <gasps> you don't like spinach. Here's a here's a pet peeve of mine. We had a pizza party. I think we talked about it last podcast for yeah. Father's Day with my father mm-hmm. and my daughter brought her wood fired uh, pizza oven. Mm. And uh, I was being the martyr and I wanted to be last. So there's like 12 people had to make their pizzas first. So when the, especially the other, not everybody could eat their whole pizza. So I was just walking around eating a slice off everybody's pizza while I was mm-hmm. waiting. Right. Mm-hmm. And people put spinach on a pizza that's blasphemy what kind of greenery on a on a pizza like leaves of spinach i'm like this is not this that's is not even christian that's that's yeah that's yeah that's awful that's, yeah that should be so, against somebody's religion i don't uh i don't care for spinach too much all these vegetables that i don't care for like spinach and brussels sprouts and all these are things that i ate my whole my whole life at home oh yeah and i, I think i'm just rebelling against them all it's probably the reason that you're still alive right now. Probably. Probably yeah. is. Yep. But it's kind of yeah. like our parents, you know, you don't fully appreciate 
them until you realize that they're the reason that you're here. Yeah. And then you then you realize they had to put up with you. I was telling is... people the other day, we have two <laughs> large freezers jam packed still at, at my parents' house. Like the two chest freezers, like six foot freezers, they're mm -hmm. just full to the rim. In fact, one of them has a brick on it to keep the lid sealed from oh, all wow. the uh the stuff from the garden still like they're in their wow. mid mid late 80s and they're still growing this hmm. half acre garden and, and freezing and blanching and freezing everything so that's really that's honestly that's that's so neat i think that would be a fun retirement project to just sort of unwind is have a nice little nothing too crazy but maybe like maybe uh 12 by 18 foot garden that you can just fence off and put lots of like tomatoes in or i don't know kale lettuce potatoes i even like growing potatoes potatoes are good every week my wife goes north to her parents for a vacation and all the family gathers at their house mm -hmm. in the last couple of years i haven't gone and uh that's of course when everything is ripe else oh. yeah <laughs> watch figures. Hundreds of tomatoes drop to the ground and rot because nobody right. was there to, and so it's uh, it's time consuming hmm. to do something with them. And old Dougie doesn't have time to uh, be making <laughs> making to things with tomatoes. But anyway, yeah. uh, I was I was gonna say before we get into our topic of the day or whatever, but uh, lunch today I had lunch with a fellow straight from Nepal. Wow, and it was hilarious talking to this guy. Because first time out of Nepal. Oh, wow. And if you know Nepal at all, it's just mountains and mountain roads. And it's like those scary, worst roads ever kind of shows, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just like two tracks on the side of a mountain looking down hundreds of. Drop him in uh, Ontario cornfields. He couldn't believe driving from Toronto here. Like the earth is so flat. <laughs> no he says amazing and the speed that you can go on the road because the roads are just horrible bumpy mountain roads and this guy was just flying across the yeah. ontario 100 miles an hour <laughs> straight anyway that's all I you just said miles an hour what are you some kind of an american right right i revert back i didn't i wasn't always raised metric hey eh? really yeah, I don't know when the switch was, but uh, everything I do really is like I I always talk feet and inches. I don't talk metric ever. Really? Uh, other than now, I I'm I uh, kilometers. I I talk a lot of kilometers now. Yeah. But otherwise, I don't touch metric oh, with wow. my day to day. In fact, you can't even buy material. Like lumber and everything is still imperial. Still imperial. Yeah. So. I didn't remember that it was called imperial. I just thought it was American standard for. Uh... ASV, American Standard Version. Oh, that's a Bible. Mm. <laughs> hey, uh, leading into our, our discussion is, and we're maybe catching some people off guard, but episode number 40 is the end of our season of podcasting. Forever. <laughs> For not ever. <clears throat> but we are uh, taking the summer off. We talked about this a while ago and evaluating our schedules going forward for the summer and it's just going to be too hit and miss mm -hmm. and uh, very few weeks that uh, either one of us is available and it's just and someone's getting married and taken off too yeah i've heard about that yeah i bet you have yeah i've been hearing so, a lot about it lately so we just thought we would recap our first 40 episodes and things that we like things that we want to change and going mm -hmm. forward when we come back brand new and fresh again mm -hmm. uh what do you see what do you think let's start about let's start from the beginning our first podcast yeah well let's think about what ryan said for it. what ryan said yeah what, i love what ryan said yeah because they were they're a little tough a little tough to listen to yeah, yeah. Well, it made me feel pretty good that he you know uh was talking about how you know how much we've grown right he was saying yeah. that we started out you know sort of well, yeah, so I've just been, you know, sweeping up around the house and then it but, turned into No, no, know. no, it was uh it was uh, <laughs> I I heat my my house with with wood 
It's a dry heat, he says. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was that monotone, mm -hmm. but that's how he was saying it. It was fantastic. Yeah. It, it was. And backing well, up. Wait, how about him for a guest? Oh, my gosh. What a he great so guest. Good. He was, was so good. Yep. I was I was just, uh, I felt just smitten by him sitting next to him. I, I, I rewatched it, and I was like, am I nervous? Am I nervous? I think I was. He was so really? he was so uh, quippy and fun and awesome that uh, yep. he yeah. he was a classy guy. He did a great job. So yeah, that was fun. Yeah, but uh, and he's a fan. I mean, the more I saw his work uh, that weekend, because you know you know everyone's work from a few posts, but the more you see his work, you see, wow, he is really really skilled too. Yeah, he's just very awesome. talented. Yeah, very talented. So. Um, yeah, but that, that was true. You know, at the time we weren't very good at this and we both had experience in, you know, making tutorials and stuff along those lines, but this is totally a different format. This yeah. is not something that yeah. we're used to. So, but I like it. I like it. I'm sold on the idea. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, I don't foresee us quitting unless someone quits posting stuff, but otherwise, yeah. uh, you know, this is the, we're going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna keep this this train rolling, and what, what are some? What, oh, sorry, but go ahead. I, what are no. some highlights? <laughs> highlights for you? Well, the highlight, like I really enjoyed having the guests that we had. Yeah, like I I like to see more. Let's say the highlights, but even going forward, things that I would like to see mm -hmm. would be. I think I like the idea of having more guests, but I also like the idea of uh, variety. Mm -hmm. and uh, we talked a little bit about this about craft in general mm -hmm. not necessarily solely wood carving yeah and uh yeah we're gonna have a lot more really cool people on the show uh this coming season we're gonna do uh interviews with some hopefully some people outside of just the world of carving right some yeah. people craft and, craft in general yeah yeah craft you can call it craft you could call it art uh if you want to go there you can <laughs> yeah arts but i yeah i'd like to see that yeah uh, how about the name coffee and carving we've been back and forth in this a while yeah i think where we sit right now is doug likes he he every once in a while he comes up with an idea and then i think <laughs> i like coffee and carving best so far of the ones that you've told me but if somebody out there has a better name for it or you have a better name for it i would love to hear it i haven't heard a better name yet well, yes, I am open to that as well because uh, the reason being is we're pigeonholing our audience that with coffee and carving. Whereas I talk to people all the time that listen mm -hmm. to our podcast that will never carve a thing. Yeah, the carving is not a draw. Like I don't right. know if it has to be like what was your what was your first podcast called the uh, the look Alec at, look, look at me yeah I'm look sorry. at me I'm Alec Lacasse. <laughs> oh, it's a, it was called the Alec Lacash. I can't say it. Show. Alec Lacash show. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, uh, for instance, that said nothing. Yeah. Except for who you are. Which gives you a little freedom because then you can just, you know, I could just interview my buddy who's a psychologist and then, or a psychoanalyst or, uh, or like then I could interview somebody who studies trees or, Whatever yeah. I wanted, really. You know, somebody yeah. who was a mountaineer or, you know, whatever, studies abnormal psych, stuff like that, which was fun. Yep. Yeah, and I like the idea, like, carve and craft or it's just something a little bit different. But uh, anyway, yeah. we've got uh, we've got time to play with that. Yeah. What uh, what, did, what would you like to see? Uh, like I said, I think we'll, we'll have a lot more interviews. We'll have a lot more... Uh, conversations with people who are really good at stuff that we can say how did you get so good at that stuff <laughs> and then they'll say well it wasn't easy and then we'll say dang it why why is everything that has to be hard yeah man one um, of the things one of my favorite takeaways was remember that one show that we did that was really good quality <laughs> oh, we did two of them, I think. Didn't did we, we do two? I think so. And for some reason, we squeaked yeah. two in, and then we had nothing but crashes of computer systems from then on going forward. And research shows that uh, 
over the summer i have to buy a compatible uh, laptop yeah to uh, be able to to do that again but i love that show the audio sounded great we had mm -hmm. sound effects and that's what i want every show to be like in the fall we're going to come back at you with really good quality because some of the podcasts that i've listened to in the past that we've done i kind of sound oh. like i'm exploding like oh, horrible. Out. yeah it horrible. Me Embar embarrassing crazy. almost yeah well i would say yeah. i wasn't well i wasn't going to say embarrassing but that's fine if you want to go i'm going to say embarrassing i was always embarrassing like, why did he fix no i'm just kidding <laughs> well yeah because i don't know how really so we're going to figure that out we're going to we're either going to hire somebody we're going to get better equipment we're going to give up and start we're up. not going to give up but no, we, do want, we want to up the quality for sure yeah we will we will we will uh, I'm certainly not a sound engineer, so if you're looking for a sound engineer to hire, look elsewhere. No. And you are the brains of the technology department, too, by the way. So with that admission, we're in tough wow. shape. <laughs> well, I mean, I think anyone's better than me. Truly, I don't I don't even... I think people assume because I'm young. Like, I, there was a lady in my class who was like, I'm interested in taking your, your online carving school courses. And I said, oh, great, okay. She's like, okay, do you mind meeting me later to help me with it? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I could do that. So we were camping, so I left my tent. I went over to help her, and she was like, okay, well, I've got my iPad. Now, what do I do? Do I click on one of these? And I was like, do you click on one of these? She was like, which one do I click on? And I was like, you click on the, the uh, well, how do you get to your browser? I was just testing her. That was probably yeah. mean of me. And she said, uh, she said, I don't really know. I don't really know how to get to my, what's a, I don't even know what a browser is. And I said, oh, okay. All right. So here's the thing. You're going to want to hit this. This is how you get to the internet. And yeah. once you're there, then you're going to punch this in. And then, so I just did, did the whole thing for her. And then I was slightly concerned that maybe she wouldn't, uh, luckily we made it, you know, the website's pretty, it's pretty, it's very easy to use, but yeah, it's, it was a little nervous for her, but she, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not one to uh, internet because people ask me about like for instance I'm talking with a guy about making an app for the school right now so that it's mm -hmm. easier to log in and log out, and the guy was asking me questions like well what does your uh, Stacy Oshielmo look like or what's your mama's mamatron or something and I was like I don't know what a mamatron is no, <laughs> he's like either. well it's the back end of your the back end of your website <laughs> and I was like oh no I don't know how to get to that. He was like, well, how do you edit it? I was like, oh, yep, I got that. I got that. So I, I sent him just some screenshots of, like, you know, how I use it. And he was like, that's that's good enough. I think I got an idea. <laughs> Leave me alone now. I got an idea that not to ask any more questions. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So. so, yeah, I would like to see more of that, more interviews. But, yeah, I think you're right. Better quality of audio will be coming at you guys. We'll have some uh, We'll have some really good guests. Uh, we'll uh, – We'll be get well. I think we'll be a little bit refreshed too. More uh, more ideas, things to talk about. So feel free to send mm -hmm. us your ideas as well if you have uh, any any thoughts. Um, but we definitely want to. I think we want to make it more uh, entertaining as well with the sound effects and people who are less like us. Maybe you know, like they don't do the same thing that we do. Yeah, and some of them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll mix it up, but cool. yeah, for sure. The uh, the quality is what really drives me crazy. And, uh, yeah, we'll get that fixed up. Yep. So. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise we're not going, we're not, we're coming back. We're coming yeah. back. We'll come back strong. And, uh, yeah, oh, it's yeah. just, uh, it's good to take a break. So, I think that's, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm breaking up with someone right now, sort of. Yeah, I know. I thought I mentioned that to a couple of them like, no, no, don't go. Yeah. But you know, I have a, uh, a whole homestead to uh to clear out mm. jobs to do vacations to take yep work to do so yeah it's gonna yep. be a it's gonna be a busy summer and before you know it'll be over and we'll be back but if you're brave enough there's uh 40 episodes up that you can go back and listen to <laughs> yeah if you haven't listened to them all you can the, see the growth the, yes the, the progression <laughs> how how bad that we were and how much doug did talk about his wood just burning wood constantly <sighs> he's talking about how he burned oh. his wood all right so um well i think that closes that section i think we should probably get into the next one in the future then this would be a seamless transition <laughs> mail bag 
pena eso. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I guess. We need a button for that. Yeah, we do. We need a button that says mailbag in a way that doesn't yeah. make Doug fall asleep. All right. This is from Tom M. He says, great to see Alec in Makokota today. I hope you had a great time at Woodcarver's Congress. Alec, see if you can get Doug to pronounce the town correctly. Lakota. What? What did you say? Say Lakota? Lakota. Lakota. He says Lakota. He, um, but it's Makokota. Makokota. And I and I wish I would have. He put that at the beginning of the email. Then I would have known not to say the word because then you could just hear me say it. But I think so he wanted just, me to show you the spelling of it and see if you could say it. So you blew it. Well, he blew it. Tom did. <laughs> so because you know, how am I supposed to? Just, am I supposed to start from the bottom? Yeah, am I supposed to start from the bottom? You know. That's right. Yeah, Roger. Wrote, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Ruining everything for us, man. Yeah, in the future, we're not going to respond to Tom. That's another way we can make the podcast better. Uh, Roger says, hey, Alec and Doug. Thanks for spelling my name right, Roger. It's A-L-E-C. That's very nice. Um, I, be, I think every name tag I've ever gotten for a wood carving class is A-L-E-X, so it feels good. I just oh, I feel better. Every time I post a picture of my carvings on Facebook, my friends all ask to buy them. My carvings are mostly tutorials by Doug. Also, I saw a lot of people submitting carvings to Woodcarvers Congress who are carving your carvings. All right. And because I know you, I look at them and, and they're like, they're like, yeah, I'd like to submit this as purely original, my own idea artwork category. And I'm looking at him like, that's Doug Linker's carving. You basically, he might as well have carved that for you. Anyway, if that's you, Roger, I'm just ki- I'm just kidding. I don't think it was you. Um, anyway, he says my carvings are mostly tutorials for Doug, uh, and he uh, who I always give credit for. So it wasn't him. Yeah, it wasn't Roger, and who and and who Doug gives credit for too. Tom Hines, Five Minute Wizard. Yes. I always yeah. want people to know it's not my version, but not mine. It it's my version, but not mine originally. My question is: It is in, is it in poor taste to sell Christmas ornaments and other carvings that are essentially tutorials, even if credit is given to the original artist? I've given away many carvings, and really makes them happy to see. It makes me happy to see how much people enjoy them. Selling them though would keep me in the wood. If you get my drift, I get your drift. Uh, whatever your advice is, I'll follow it. Oh, no. no. Wow, that's You're... commitment. Wow. Is that it? Sorry. Uh, love the show. I watch one YouTube. Uh, I drive a milk truck. Oh, this is this is Roger with the milk truck in Toronto. Oh, Roger. Thanks, Roger. We appreciate you, man. Uh, question was, uh, can he sell? Of course he can sell. He can do whatever he wants to do. They're, uh, it's yeah. still your work. You, yep. uh, you, you created something. I mean, yeah. It was a picnic table plan, and you sold picnic tables. What's the difference? I have no issue whatsoever with that. You just yeah. knock yourself out. What? Well, see, people. I. I don't think. I don't think I give the wrong message sometimes, but uh, the tutorials are for you. Yeah. Like once I post something on the internet, it's it's out there. It's there. Yeah. And uh, it's it, they're yours to make. If right. you sell them, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. If you submit an article to Woodcarving Illustrated of your original design, that's my tutorial. Yeah. Then we'll we'll have an issue. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, no. Go for it. Of course, I want people to make the carvings that I give tutorials for. That's not uh, no problem. Yeah. No. Nope. Um, but if you guys try to make my carvings and sell them, I'll find you. <laughs> do what? I'll find where you live. <laughs> I will what are you come. Do? I will come over there, and I will. I will look at you and I will say, good job. You did a good job on that one. There you go. (laughs) Tim says, uh, hi, Doug and Alec. There was a conversation in the most recent podcast with the excellent Ryan Olson, we agree, about carving faces that always turn out looking like yourself. I like to use the study sticks to practice carving faces. No matter how hard I try, they always turn out looking very angry and cross. I was wondering if you think that may say more about me subconsciously projecting my inner state maybe or just my lack of skills i may just be so, angry no here's the thing i i did a lot of angry people too so let's talk about what what makes someone angry mm-hmm. deep deep eyes right people always think that i'm angry yeah just walking around day to day 
Yeah. But my eyes are set deeper. Yeah. And I think that's one thing. And yeah. eyebrows. Mm-hmm. If your eyebrows are are, uh, are are slanted at all, you look mm-hmm. angry. What else? Yeah. What else makes you angry? I don't know. I get the same thing. People constantly think that I look angry. Yeah. I don't know why. Yep. And I never I never wear sunglasses. So I'm always squinting too. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that's true. It's squinting. Yeah. So there's a similar thing there. If you're squinting, it kind of looks like you're angry because you're pushing these two. Yeah. Oh God. Levitator something eyes, uh, forward and up. Right. And then you got yep. this keystone that's all compressed above your bridge meeting your forehead. And yep. then, yeah. And then you've got, your eyes are more squinted. You know, you've got a little bit more of, uh, your crow's feet are more prominent when you squint your eyes, you know? Yep. And another thing too is, uh, if you have a bearded man, the the down mustache mm-hmm. makes you look angrier than the raised mustache. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like a little like a pretend you could twizzle your mustache. He he's probably gonna look happy. Alec is not listening to me anymore. He's making faces into the camera. <laughs> like no, I'm just trying to be your visual demonstration. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm trying okay, to annotate okay. what you're saying. So you're saying <laughs> when this goes down, his lines yeah. come in hard. It's like you can't yeah. be happy like this, can you? Let's try it. Yeah. Why is this guy pulling up to my house? Just go like this. Yeah. So anyway, to your point, uh, Tim, no, it doesn't mean you're angry. It just means you've got your uh, your anatomy maybe a little bit tweaked. Uh, just move those eyebrows apart and cut cut a little bit out of here, right? This is a way you can do it. If you got if you have two if you have this angle here, you know, cut a little bit out of this part. That'll kind of lighten him up a little bit. And yeah. raise his eyebrows if you really want to make him less less. Angry. Yeah, raised arch, like okay. raised angle, angry, raised arch, happy. Yeah, right, exactly. Cole says, morning, Doug and Alec. My name is Cole Col- <laughs> Colin Bowen, and I invite you to call me Cole. I'm from hey, the Cole. southwest of England in the county of Somerset. I took up carving as a hobby after seeing Doug on YouTube several years ago. I'm improving with practice and time and have taken to setting my carvings into little buildings to setting my carvings into little buildings. The attached photo was taken on... Oh, Australia. yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. The, the attached photo is, is my take on an Australian gold miner on his outside toilet, which the Aussies call the Dunny. It has yeah. an Australian bird on the roof called a gala and a large, larger-than-life red-backed spider glued to the toilet wall. My carvings have attracted interest among my friends, and I was recently invited to take a class um, every two weeks as a charity gig, helping people who have tr- had treatment for cancer. Wow, that's awesome! Yes, I teach groups of five people and use simple projects such as gnomes. Can I give a shout out to Tim and Becca Cracknell, f- who run the charity with blessings for the great work that they do? Thanks Hello, to you both. Gibbon. Yeah, Tim and Becca Cracknell, you guys are the crack, man. These rock. Yep. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. That's a better one. Thanks to you both for inspiration. I don't think any of us could have predicted the positive impact you are having on a group of people who you are unlikely to ever meet. If you can ever visit the UK, please creep around for a cup of tea. Best wishes and many thanks. A spot of tea? Oh, just a touch of tea world now, won't you? So he's a great little yeah. car. It's a little outhouse with a little door. And uh, I love this idea. I saw a, another one today too by uh, oh, what's her name? I can't think of her name. Uh, she carves gnomes, and she did them in a in a box with a lid on the end, just opening up to have a little little scene in a box. Oh, cool! And she had two little gnomes. That really mm-hmm. cute. I mm-hmm. like the idea of adding something to your carvings. And- yeah, I like. That he puts a little. He has a little. He has an old Swedish man looking guy in a in a in a little outhouse or. A- yep. What does he call it? Yep. Dungy? Mm-hmm. And there's a giant spider right behind Ooh, his yes. head. You see that? <laughs> That's fantastic. That's yeah. so cool. I love it. Very that. fun. Very, very fun. F- very funny. Anyway, nice call or call, whatever uh, cool. you say. Cool. Jimmy Walker says, hello again. My birthday is in January. Usually birthday. I use this as belated an excuse. Birthday. <laughs> yeah, happy belated birthday. Sorry we missed it. We apologize. Wish you would have let us know sooner. I usually use this as an excuse to buy oh, 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 oh. I almost said Canadian. Outdoor gear. <laughs> outdoor outdoor gear. Eh? A new knife pack or a tent, but this year will be different. I saw a flyer for a Florida woodcarver's roundup in the part of Florida, in Northport, Florida, rather, in early February with Alec as one of the instructors. So, obviously, 
I'll be doing that this year. Alec, is there any specific thing I should plan to bring? Specific tools, my own bark, etc. Thanks, thanks again, guys. Jimmy. Well, that's cool, Jimmy. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I appreciate the reminder, too, that I'll be in Florida. Uh, I, uh, I asked for that gig because I, like, I wanted to be somewhere warm in the cold. So I'm glad they gave it to me. I'm glad to hear they gave it to me. What is it? Um, a class in Florida. I wanted to teach a, a, a yeah, class when, where it's warm. When is it? Uh, February, it looks like. Wow. February. So I think it's middle of February, but look it up. Go online, Google Florida wood carving Alec Lacasse, and maybe that will come up if you want to take that class. Um, anyway, my, uh, my suggestion, and, and this is probably relevant to those who are listening who are carvers, so I'll make it short uh, because it's only relevant to them and no one else, but – I like to use a nice wide scoop, like a number three, which is a semi-curved scoop. I like to use a big nine, like maybe a 15-9. I like to use a V-tool, maybe three mil or a quarter inch, something like that, with a pretty narrow uh, V on it, like a shallower, like a 30 degree or a 25 degree. I like to use a skew instead of a knife or a skew or a hook knife, if that's all you got. I like to use a small nine and an even smaller nine, so like a six millimeter nine and then like a really small like three millimeter nine or an 11. And those are the tools. Those are the main ones. And that is, I usually bring a few little bits, little tiny one millimeter veiners and little one, one millimeter V tools. But uh, yeah, those are, those are the tools that I like to use most often. So that answers that. Oh, and Chris Brown, the guy who, uh, who wanted my truck um, messaged me back. Sorry, Chris, if you're listening, I'm going to send you pictures of my truck and then maybe you can buy it if you want it. If the ru- if the rust doesn't offend you, my brother in law is looking at it now though. I don't know. Uh, of course, I'll, I'll give you your first dibs, Chris. But future brother in law, please contact there. Use your your personal business on your own time. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm also um, selling a camera. If anyone's interested, it's an yep, A7. Yep. Uh, this out, and uh, I've got some tools here that <laughs> <laughs> uh, swap shop with uh, Doug and Alec. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like basically like eBay, but more entertaining. Um, there used to be a radio program. I used to catch on, and at least here, and it was Swap Shop, and everybody would phone in and say, "Yeah, I've got an old door no. in my bathroom, and I like to have ten dollars." And the guy would repeat, "Okay, well, uh, Sandra has a door that fits her bathroom for ten dollars. If you want to give her a call, it, it, the whole and people would swap show. stuff, and they'd be like, yep. "Well, I have an old laptop that doesn't turn on." Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the most Canadian sounding entertainment I've ever heard. Uh, that was AM radio, if you've That's, ever heard. Oh, I AM knew radio. it was. Yeah. Oh, I knew it was. Yeah. They wouldn't put that on FM radio. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fun one today, and that's kind of kind of along the lines of what we've been talking about about craft and what is craft. Uh-huh. But this is an interesting one. It's a YouTube video. It's made by a fellow Ontarian that is Little King Goods. He is a leather worker, so him alone is a is a real fun uh, YouTube channel that you can uh, learn some leather craft. But he also has a sideline of uh, called Craft Life episodes where he interviews somebody. And I watched this latest one called The Brewmaster on Little King Goods YouTube channel. The video is called The Brewmaster. And it and this is fella in his his uh, story about how he became the brewmaster of this small little uh, brewery. And it was really, really interesting. I loved it. And, and I should say, too, the video was so well done. Overly. It's, yeah. And it has a guy sitting in a chair like the I Am First type videos. And he's yeah. there. And uh, it's really a very well done video. And it really uh, got me excited about what craft is. And like I said, he's a brewer, but that's craft to him. And so you fantastic. said it's wood, King Wood Big or little, something? Little, little king little king goods <laughs> little king i was so far off little king woods okay little king goods, goods. Come on. little king goods <laughs> all right uh that's cool we'll check him out for sure mine is it my turn 
Yes, mine, is, mine is Rose Franzen. Maybe I picked her before. Actually, I think I did. But if I didn't, this is this is my artist. And even if I did, this is my artist of the week. She is uh, my media. I every year I go to uh, to uh, Iowa. I get to uh, visit with her. I usually bother her. She has uh, one of those eye rings or like things on her galleried wall where you ring it and then you're outside and then they let you in and she's always working and painting because she's uh she's amazing so she uh usually we just we call and i'm usually with other people who are more important than me so they let them in and uh i always tag along and this time around i got to see some of her more recent paintings and this is one of them uh that's a painting was, yeah isn't that awesome oh my goodness yeah, like and a photograph. Oh, yeah, and at the top, amazing. at the top, there are these negatives that she painted. You see the negatives? Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and if you stare at them for long enough, uh, you'll see yeah. them in the middle, like where they're not, where there isn't any space. But then oh. this is this is the other side. Uh, these there are three paintings here. I just took a picture of a couple uh, that I will be printing and selling uh, later. <laughs> so if you want any um, copies of this. They told right. me not to take pictures of one painting at a time because that would be copyright. So I took two, but I'm going to cut them up. And cool. yeah, so those will be available. I went with this guy. That's Fred Cogelo or Cogelo, as his name is actually pronounced. Yes. And so he was there. We got to hang out a little bit. And he's running for some sort of office. I can't remember. Uh, some sort of political thing. So go check that out, Fred Cogelo. I don't know what he stands for exactly yet, but he's a good, good uh Amazing, amazing carver. And I also got to meet uh, Marv Kaiserset when I was out there. Well, a lot of people would say that he is their mentor. He's an older fellow then, is he? Yeah. Yeah. So he does stuff like this. Wow. Yeah. So he is, uh, yeah, that's Marv wow. Kaiserset. I met him and he is, uh, he's real calm. He's real even keel. He's almost like the Joe Biden of wood carving. Uh, in that he's very just sort of calm. He's there. He's kind of got a, he doesn't really have a smile like Joe Biden does quite the same smile, but he's got a very calm presence to him. He kind of talks at a quieter pace. And uh, man, he is, uh, but he's an amazing carver though. If Joe Biden was good at wood carving, this would, no, probably not even, <laughs> you know, <laughs> similar. I don't want to dig a hole, but he is, he is. No, uh, sorry, audio, but he's amazing carving. Yeah, I'm just uh, just amazed by him. So, and it was fun too because I was honest with him. I've, I told him, you know, you I know you're the hero guy for all of the caricature carvers I know, but sure. I personally would love a tour of your work if you could show me. And so he started showing me some of his stuff on that he was doing recently, and then I Google searched him later and I realized, oh my gosh, he is so good. He is so yeah. good. So, yeah. that's it. Very fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, episode number 40 is a close, and we look forward to coming back with episode number 41 in the fall. And who knows, we may just surprise you with little extra little videos at some point when we get together. You think? Could be. You never Could know. Be. You don't know. So, take your vitamins. <laughs> take your vitamins. <laughs> Please. Later. <laughs> <laughs>